Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Welcome to Knife AQ, episode 155. The Knife series where I answer all your questions, sharp or dull. This week, amongst our questions, we're asking ourselves, if you had $200 to spend and you were only going to buy one knife, what would that knife be? Let's get into it. Do, do, do. Da -da. So if you're new to this series, the deal is folks like you, yes, you watching this video right now, if you have a question about knives or knife related in any way, shape or form, drop it in the comments section below. That way it will have a chance to be featured in a future episode. First question this week comes from Epep 948 or 948. That's the way that most people would pronounce that. That's the first 947 we're taking. <laughs> Uh, too many knives, too little money. I feel you. Uh, I know it's early, but SHOT Show is right around the corner. This was obviously <laughs> posed to us right before SHOT Show, but it's actually a question that we would, couldn't answer until after going to SHOT Show. Uh, obviously, after you see slash experience everything coming for the new year, what one fixed blade and one folder are you most interested slash excited to own? Bonus, if they are under $200 each. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So for folders, um, it comes down to two for me. I know you said one, but it, it comes down to kind of two for me, uh, that I'm most excited about from the show as something that I want to actually own, um, more than, more than the rest. Lots of good stuff, obviously. Um, uh, but the Spyderco Bodacious is one. I, uh, the, the Spyderco Shaman is pretty cool, but I never really gelled with it. Uh, the bodacious to me looks like it's something that would better fit what I'm looking for for an everyday carry as opposed to just a you know, folding survival knife that the uh, the shaman tends to kind of seem to sit in that genre a little bit. Uh, but it's the blades a tiny bit thinner, the handles thinner, uh, but you have more edge and more actual handle to grip onto similar size, similar drop point shape. I'm really excited about that. Uh, and the manual version of the Protec TR3 really excited about that as well. Uh, the TR3 is a great knife. It's a great shape. I like the idea of having it in just a, a manual button lock. I think that should be uh, pretty darn sweet. Uh, I'll do you one more, not a folder, uh, but something that doesn't fit into either genre you mentioned, but uh, OTFs, the new drop point version of the Benchmade Shootout, I like. Um, I like the standard, the Tonto version of the Shootout, but I'm more of a drop point guy in general. And I'm going to have a hard time, I think, resisting that drop point shootout with its nice, thin, slicey crew wear blade. Most OTFs don't have very efficiently slicing blades. The shootout is an exception, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, fixed blades. I wonder what you <laughs> Obviously, the MKM Pocket Tango, my first production collaboration. I am so looking forward to that coming out and looking forward to actually being able to carry uh, those. But I think in, uh, I should mention also, it is available for pre-order now at the Knife Store. You could check those out uh, at the link below. But I think in the, the interest of fairness, I'm going to remove that from the equation here um, and talk about something else. Uh, and for me, that something else is uh, the Actinon Verba M25. What a sweet little fixed blade that uh, turned out to be. Round about that four, four and a quarter inch blade size, but it's nice and narrow, easy to carry, uh, great ergonomics on that knife. I mean, the, the sculpted uh, linen micarta handles on that fit so well in my hand. Uh, and I don't currently own an Acton on Verba knife, and that might be the fixed blade that changes that for me. Uh, really, really sweet knife, uh, check it out. Um, I don't know the prices on any of those knives. If I were to have to guess, the uh, the Bodacious is probably around that $200 mark. Uh, what's a Shaman nowadays? I should look that up, shouldn't I? Let's see. <laughs> Pull it up on knifecenter.com. Very handy uh, resource, by the way. Ooh, it might be more than $200. The Shaman right now is $270. Um, wait a minute. The Bodacious is available for pre-order right now. So I could just look up that, couldn't I? If I learned how to spell, I would be quicker at this. That'd be pretty <laughs> 245 uh, for the Bodacious. So 
not under 200 bucks. Uh, the manual TR3, probably not under 200 bucks. Uh, the uh, Malibu, uh, which is slightly smaller or about the same size, is over 200 bucks. So, man, it's probably gonna be more. Uh, the M25, probably gonna be over 200 bucks too. I don't know what the price on that's gonna be, actually. Great job answering this question. Uh, the shootout's gonna be expensive. Um, that's like 270 something now. Can't even remember. The Pocket Tango is going to be less than 200. Starts at 170. So there you go. <laughs> Ding. We knew we'd get there in the um, I didn't even plan any of that. I promise you. <laughs> all right. Next question comes from King's Clown Videos. Thanks. Thank you all for this channel. My favorite. You honor us. Uh, I will probably only do this once. So I'm looking for a $200 ambidextrous EDC pocket knife. Thank you for all you do. Um, cool, fun. Um, there's so many great knives. When you get around that, that $200 price point, the world's kind of your oyster. You're not gonna get like the super crazy high end stuff, but the amount of variety and the amount of different designs, lock types, materials, blade steels, everything you can get is vast. So there's a lot of great choices, but the one and done aspect is interesting on this. So. What is, if you're gonna have one quality pocket knife, you're willing to spend that amount of money, what should you look for? Uh, for me, I would go something for something with kind of an average size, not too big, not too small, maybe three to three and a half inch blade probably. Uh, if you're gonna go bigger, easy ease of carry is probably gonna be uh, the biggest part of there. You don't wanna have a knife that's gonna be too big for you to wanna carry all the time. So if it, if it is a bigger knife, we're gonna go something that's easy to carry. Um, and versatility, EDC, just general purpose cutting, um, you know, harder work when necessary, maybe a little bit of tactical vibes, a little bit of uh, something you could take camping. Um, what would you want? So I, I'd look for, uh, personally, or what I started to narrow down on was that three to three and a half inch, maybe less, a little less than three and a half inch, drop point blades, and when you come to ambidextrous use, I don't think there's anything better still to this day than the crossbar lock. Uh, so we're going to look at a few options there, starting with uh, Benchmade. You know, they started it all with the Axis lock 25 years ago now. Uh, the Mini Presidio 2 could be a really good option. $162 for this, so you save a, a bit of money uh, under that or uh, $200 price point. Even the full size, if you wanted a bigger knife, about three and three quarter, 3.8 inch blade, I can't remember. Um, love that knife. That's under $200 still as well. But this, you've got about a three and a quarter inch blade, S30V steel is going to hold an edge a good long time. That drop point blade is just about perfect for whatever you're going to throw at it. It's long enough to get some big work done. It's slicey enough to be efficient enough and, and a joy to use when you're actually cutting with it. Camping, tactical if you need to, I guess, you know, it's uh, on the smaller side for tactical stuff, but that just is going to work so well. And the handle is lightweight with the CF Elite uh, scales there, but not shrimpy, not like flexy, not anything that doesn't feel super secure. And it actually fills the hand pretty well also. The best part about a crossbar lock is they are completely ambidextrous. And as long as the manufacturers put pocket clip screws on both sides, these are uh, about as lefty friendly as you can expect on a wide uh, spread mainstream scale in the knife industry. Deep carry, pretty deep carry, tiny bit sticks up. Dual thumb studs, that axis lock action. It's so, so very nice. Uh, possible alternative to this, I was, because um, I really like this, this size and shape and format in general. I think this is a great option for that one and done sort of thing. But what else you might ask yourself? Well, the Kaiser Drop Bear came out uh, last year or just over a year ago, which is two years ago by the can like 2022, right? Uh, the Kaiser Drop Bear, super popular knife and some interesting things going on here. This version right now is about uh, $198 with a 20 CV blade steel. So more edge retention than the Benchmade and fancy handle scales here, Toxic Storm Fat Carbon. But you don't need to spend that much money to get this level of performance with this knife. Maybe this is a little too gaudy for you. You can check out our Knife Center exclusive version with that 20 CV steel. This is only 140 bucks. Very cool. Aluminum handles here. You might like the, uh, the slightly more premium feel of that. 
versus the CF Elite. Still fills the hand quite nicely, maybe even a touch better. Three inch blade, so technically shorter, but let me hold these two up next to each other. There's not a lot of difference between these two, quite honestly. If we actually like line up the edges, there is barely less edge with the Presidio, the mini Presidio right there. But at the same time, that drop bear tip to the leading edge of the handle is uh, just under that three inch mark. So that could make a difference depending on where you live. If there's a three inch blade length restriction, this would be a better option for you without really giving anything up versus the uh, Presidio. You have ball bearings in the pivot rather than washers. So maybe a little, you know, Degrees of difference between those in terms of uh, keeping it clean. These are a little bit more susceptible, susceptible to dust and grit getting in there, but they're still pretty easy to keep uh, cleaned out. Action is great. You've got the reversible deep carry pocket clip. That works quite well. I mean, this is gonna be a really, really sweet option also. If you wanna go with something a little bit bigger though, maybe you want a little bit more reach. Um, I mentioned I wanna keep it easy to carry. And my initial thought actually right at the beginning of this was, uh, Benchmade 940. That's a good kind of do it all gentleman's tactical everyday carry ranch knife. You know? <laughs> um, but they are a little bit more than 200 bucks. Not too much. I think it's like 217, less than 220 for the standard uh, aluminum versions. But how about the Gerber Savvy? Pretty good option here. Just under 200 bucks. 20 CV blade steel. Again, three and a half inches aluminum frame. But Despite the size, that larger size with a little more reach and a little more cutting edge, super easy to carry. Look at how narrow that is folded up. Not going to bulk you down at all. Great, great thing. Um, technically, does this meet the definition of ambidextrous since it has a single-sided pocket clip? The pocket clip is... Thumb stud. Thumb stud. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, the thumb stud is reversible, but it is only on one side. But then that also begs the question, are you gonna even need to use the pocket clip or thumb stud? Thank you. Because a crossbar lock, you can do that flick thing. This one needs a little bit of a lubricant, I think, uh, to get a little bit smoother, but you don't necessarily need that. So also a good option. Uh, and for one other larger option, I think, like I said, I think the crossbar lock is the easiest, best answer for you know, ambidextrous use. But the good old lockback, is still soldiering on and doing a great job. Check out a lot of Spyderco's lineup. Mid-mounted lockback on a lot of them. This is our exclusive Endura 4 with a VG10 core Damascus clad blade. Special price right now is like 195. But what you see here, you could apply to a, uh, a lot of different Spyderco lockbacks. The mid-mounting is easier to, to get to than you know traditional tail mount. You've got a four position pocket clip. so. Any kind of carry preference is well served and you've got that one hand opening hole. Makes it very easy. Uh, the Endura 3.8 inch blade. So definitely on the larger side, but still nice and narrow, very efficient. The geometry is excellent for, ex for easy slicing. A Little bit wider in the pocket, but still nice and flat. Not super heavy, but this probably would be like the biggest I would go for like that just one good quality pocket knife you're gonna own, this would still be a good one. You can check out the Delica too. We've got our uh, uh, our exclusive version of that if you want something a little fancier. Uh, you've got a lot of the lightweight handle scale versions too. Those come in you know, around that hundred, less than a hundred dollars I think still. Um, so you can check those out as well. One more thing to check out. Um, I talk about button locks, or, the, or at least the uh, kind of modern versions of button locks being real good for lefties as well. Technically not a symmetrical experience left and right, but you can check out this Kaiser Cormorant right here. Very easy to use with the left hand. So if that qualifies for you, that meets your definition of ambidextrous for your needs, the Cormorant could be a pretty decent option. Three and a quarter inch blade here, 20 CV. Again, great materials. Uh, titanium handles on this one, which is pretty nice. $179 for it. You've got a milled deep carry clip. It is reversible, so either side is going to work quite well. You've got that nice premium feel. Part of it does come down to that. You know, if you're spending 200 bucks, that's not a small amount of money. And if you, you wanna feel like you're getting your money's worth, this is certainly gonna do that. This is the only titanium handled knife uh, I've shown you so far. So check those out. The world is your oyster. As I mentioned, there's a ton of other button locks you could check out. Uh, and you don't even have to spend that much money uh, if you want. 
but here's some good options in that price range you're talking about. Thanks for the question. Next one comes from the 4CP. I've always wanted to ask, which is more useful, a Nesmuk or a Kephart? All right. You're trying to poke me, aren't you? You're trying to like get a rise out of me? That's fine. Um, well, let's look at a cap part here. This is the Becker BK62, and it is the closest production knife anywhere on the market that you can get that is, wait a minute, as close as you can get in production form to the original Cole Klesser Brothers cap part fixed blade knife. Uh, the grind is a little bit different. Uh, the originals had a uh, convex grind and then were convexed back towards the spine as well. But the dimensions and the shape apart from that are spot on with this Becker right here. This is actually recreated from a Cole Klesser Brothers cap part that Ethan Becker owns. So that's a cool thing. This is like real history brought forward. It even has the tapered tang uh, that the original has. The original didn't have bolt-on handles. That's the, uh, the modern difference there. But the cap part, five inch blade, more or less a spear point. I'm not, I'm gonna simplify the description a little bit just for uh, brevity's sake, is a do everything kind of knife. Food prep, camp craft, wood craft, bush craft, hunting, skinning, you name it, this does it. The Nesmuk on the other hand is a little bit more of a specialized tool. It's, it's more like a hunting knife first and foremost. However, as with anything, it depends on how you do your Nesmuk blade. So let me show you two right here. There is a Becker, the BK-19. This is a Nesmuk with a fairly pointy tip. You've also got the Joker Nesmuk S right here with a much broader tip. And that's probably the biggest difference you're gonna see uh, in terms of different ones out there is how pointy is the tip. A Kephart might have a pointier tip than most Nesmuks. I don't think, like this BK-19, I don't think most Nesmuks these days come this pointy. So if you do stuff that needs more piercing, Nesmuk might not be the option. If you need stuff to fit, or you need your blade to fit in a slightly narrower space, the narrower blade of the Kephart might give you a little more versatility. And so if we have to you know, quantify which is more useful, I guess that would be the more versatile tool in most situations. However, specialized tools work really well too. Difference in here is probably a slight degrees of difference. Uh, most Nest Mucks, especially if you've got a more pointy version like this BK-19, you're probably not gonna run anything into anything you can't do with the Nest Muck that you could have done with the Kephart, probably. But if I had to crown a winner between the two, I'd probably give it to the Kephart. Which is painful, because I'm a Nest Muck guy. I like Nest Mucks very much. Just pick the most comfortable handle. Actually, you said something smart today, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, that's my quota. Um, yeah, never again. Never again today. That That's actually a really good point. Um, and it's hard, it's one of those things that's hard to, you know, pull off in a, an environment where most knives are bought online. Um, how does a knife feel to you? And that's why I always try to describe at least, uh, especially in our new knives videos, uh, where applicable, how a knife feels to me. And I kind of like to tell you my, my hand size, which is slightly larger than average, there it is, um, to try and communicate what I feel and hopefully you can take that and interpret it to how it might feel for you. But yeah, if you've got a Kephart blade and the handle doesn't fit you very well, which I should say the BK-62 is a very neutral handle, um, versus a Nesmuk that fits your hand very well, even if the blade on the Kephart might be more versatile, you're gonna have a lot more uh, good use out of the Nesmuk. So there you go. Uh, another fixed blade question. This is our measured once, cut twice segment where we take a second slice at a previous question. Uh, and this one is from a couple of weeks ago. It's from the last FAQ uh, before SHOT Show. So this was actually like two weeks ago uh, that this went up, but it was, uh, Jason Webb was asking about a knife that he could take along hunting with him that he could use for some game processing, but it was also that survival knife, hunting survival crossover with the ability to strike a ferro rod. And Samuel J. Larson had a fantastic suggestion as an alternative that I did not mention, and I'm kind of embarrassed that I didn't because this one is actually spot on. This is perfect. Uh, he says, the White River Firecraft Pro series would have been a good option. Great topic today, love to see a table full of fixed blades. So do I. And the White River is a great option there. 
Uh, this is the four inch FC4. There's an FC5, I think there's an FC it's a seven or nine. That's probably a little too big. There's also a more compact one. Uh, 250 bucks, S35 VN, White River, does fantastic work. You've got a solid handle there. You've got a nice sturdy blade, crisp enough on the spine to strike or fire steel and has that notch cut out as well to get even more surface area striking that steel. You've even got a bow drill divot in the handle, which in conjunction with the sheath, you can use as the bearing block for a primitive bow drill fire. And as you can see from the sheath here, it comes with its own ferro rod too. I'm embarrassed. I always sing the praises about White River. I always say they're underrated and overlooked. And there I go overlooking them in a question that would have been tailor-made to show off their stuff. I'm embarrassed. White River, I'm sorry. You make a great knife. You can check that one out too. Now we come to the lightning round for today, which is actually only one question. So it's not necessarily a round, but here we go anyway. Jake Smith says, serious question. New coworker asks to use your knife. Which one do you choose? Or you just point to the scissors on the desk. First, ask what they're cutting. That kind of will weed out the pry guys and screwdriver folks who are using a knife for what it's not supposed to be used for. Uh, and then if you must, if they actually are cutting something, that's why traditionally I have always carried a Swiss Army knife as part of my everyday carry loadout because they're not gonna mess up your uh, expensive knife and then you can hand that to them and even open up the blade or scissors for them so they're ready to go. This is the Wenger, or sorry, used to be a Wenger model. The Victorinox Evo Grip S18, my Swiss Army knife of choice when I'm not carrying a Leatherman. Check it out. And now we come to our final question of the day, which is of course our most serious question of the day, which comes from Elizabeth McHeffrey. Best knife for music lovers? The MKM Pocket Tango, right? Not only a dance form, it's a widely respected form of music as well. You're gonna need two though. Takes two to tango. Yes. Then you could dual wield, like I was doing at uh, SHOT Show with the production yeah, samples. Were. It was great. Just, Just couldn't stop you. Two knives, it's pretty great. Anyway, that's all we've got for today, folks. Keep leaving your questions down below. Um, running a little bit thin on most serious questions, actually. Um, Show me what you got, throw them down there in the comments and uh, we'll have a uh, shot to answer them potentially in a future episode. Let me know what you thought of the questions. If you have some alternate suggestions for our uh, questioners today, leave them in the comments. And if you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, leave them, check out the links in the description section below. While you're over at knifecenter.com, don't forget about our long running knife rewards program because you get to earn some free money to spend on a future knife when you buy one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, and that's Thomas behind the camera, and we're signing off. See you next time.